in a, in a world where we are no longer the masters of language, what is the most important thing in education? Just keep teaching language, it's a losing strategy. Now what happens if a new generation grows up and develops intimate relations with AIs instead of with other human beings? It could have some maybe benefits, but the potential danger is enormous. I think one key principle is to understand that for the first time in history, we don't know how the world would look like in even 10 years. So our responsibility as educators, it's heavier, more difficult than any, any time before. Of course, you can never predict uh, uh, political events. You could never predict an epidemic or an earthquake. But a lot of other things you could predict. Uh, for most of history, the basic economic structure didn't change very quickly. The skills that people needed didn't change very quickly. So if we go back, say, 500 years or 1,000 years to Japan in the feudal era, people know what skills to teach the young generation. They need to know how to read and write. They need to know how to ride a horse. They need to know how to plant rice. They need to know how to bake. When we look to the future, we have no idea what skills will be needed. Even in 10 or 20 years, people say, OK, let's teach the young generation how to code. This is the age of AI, of computers. Everybody needs to code. Maybe in 10 years, AI does all the coding. You don't need human coders. So it's very difficult to, to know. Um, and therefore, the most important thing that education should give young people is a flexible mind and the ability to keep changing and learning throughout their lives because this is the one thing we are certain about is that the pace of change will not slow down. It is likely to just accelerate. So the big question is how do you uh, create, how do you uh, uh, educate a mind to be f so flexible that it can keep learning and changing, not just at age 20, but also 30 and 40 and 60 and 70, to, to, to stay in line with the uh, huge changes in the world. The other thing is that so much of education is based on language, and on the intellect, especially intellect in the form of language skills. And language, I also include mathematical language, it's not just words. And this was always, you know, kind of the human superpower, our command of language. And all our big institutions were based on language, whether it's banks or whether it's temples and religions, they are based on language. Um, and now we have something on the planet that mastered language better than us. And we still haven't come to terms with it. Um, again, in the financial system, AI will very soon be uh, far more capable than any human banker to read and, and, and write the language of finance. The same thing when I look at religions. So if I take Judaism as an example, Judaism is a religion that sanctifies texts, not humans. At the heart of the religion, there is a text which is supposed to be infallible, a superhuman intelligence. Now, the problem of Judaism for the last 2,000 years with the text is that the text was silent. People had many questions. How to interpret this difficult passage? How to relate this passage in the Bible to this real life situation? And the text remained silent. So you needed experts in texts, the rabbis, who, who got their authority from the text and were kind of the mouth of the text. And over 2000 years, they composed more and more and more texts about the text. Now, for the first time, you have something that can understand, you, can, you have a, a text that can talk back to you. No Jewish rabbi 
is able to read and remember all the texts of Judaism. There are too many texts. AI can. So in a competition, who understands Judaism better? A human rabbi or an AI? An AI is bound to win. What does a religion of the text do when suddenly it encounters a text that can talk back? If you have a question, you don't need the rabbi. You can just ask the text, and it, 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 talk, it talks to you. The same problem is in Christianity, in Islam, in Hinduism, in many religions. So this all in, in relates to the question of education. In a, in a world where we are no longer the masters of language, what is the most important thing in education? Just keep teaching language, it's a losing strategy. So we need to connect and to explore to the other aspects of the human being which are not words, which are not language. If people ask, so what is still unique to humans that AI doesn't have, and we refer to it in the beginning, it's, it's consciousness, it's feelings, it's the body. So, and I think in, as in the age of AI, an education that leaves out the body and that leaves out feelings and consciousness is a very problem. This could have been good enough, at least economically, say in the 20th century or the 19th century. But in the 21st century, uh, we have to connect in education, in university, much more to the level of feeling and body, because this is still the, the, what we have and the, what the AIs don't. You can have an AI tutor who uh, works with just every, every kid by themselves that knows their history that is interdisciplinary because the same AI tutor can teach history and chemistry and, and, and physics and, and you don't need to kind of separate it. And it can tailor the way he teaches specifically to the level of the, of the pupil, uh, to the way the pupil thinks. Some people have more of a visual mind, so the AI would use more of a visual teaching. Uh, other, other people think more in words, so the AI would use more words. Like that, you can create uh, a kind of, of personal, personalized ed education uh, the, down, the potential downside is that in both in school and also in university, a lot of the most important teaching happens during the breaks. When the uh, uh, pupils or students meet one another, and we saw it, for instance, during COVID, that it was somehow possible to recreate the experience of the classroom via, via Zoom. The greatest loss was the breaks that the students could not go out of the classroom and sit together and, and have lunch together and discuss what happened in the class or discuss what happens in the world. Now, what happens if a new generation grows up and develops intimate relations with AIs instead of with other human beings? Uh, this is, uh, this, again, we don't know. It could have some maybe benefits, but the potential danger is enormous that people will become attached to fake people and we lose, and in the process, we lose the ability to create intimacy with real human beings because real human beings are much more problematic than AIs. Like if you, a, a, an AI that wants to become your intimate friend, its greatest advantage is that it has no feelings of its own. So it's, nev it's never upset, it's never angry, it's never tired. It can focus on you 100% and understand exactly how you feel and, all, and in that way create a fake sense of intimacy. You try to establish a relationship with a human being, the feelings come in between. But the thing is that real intimacy is not just wanting somebody else to care about me. Real intimacy is I also care about the feelings of somebody else. And AI has no feelings. So a society in which 
humans uh, develop more and more intimate relationships with AIs is ultimately a society without intimacy. 